Hi everyone, this is Rose Bryson, and this quick tutorial is going to cover how to convert your segmentation into a 3D model. So we'll begin in the main 3D Slicer workspace, and I have a model of a newborn primate skull, and a segmentation of an endocast, where you can see the lilac and the brain space there in the skull. So if I toggle off the visibility of the skull by clicking that eye icon, we can see the endocast I've segmented out underneath. And the goal for today is to turn this segmentation into a 3D model. So if I can quickly navigate to the segment editor module by clicking that icon in your toolbar, you can see I've already segmented out the endocast and I'm ready to convert it to a model. To do this, you need to be in the data module. So you can navigate there by clicking on the icon in the toolbar or using that drop down menu. Either way, once you've created your segment and you're in the data module, all you have to do is check that the visibility of your segmentation is on and then right click on your segment and select export visible segments to models. As you can tell from that name, any segmentation that you have visible will be converted to a model. So you want to make sure that you turn off the visibility of any segmentations you don't want converted. If you're not using a mouse, then you can simply press control and then click your trackpad and it'll bring up the same menu. So now you can see we created a new folder called segmentations models one, because I had already created a model of the skull before. And if we expand that drop down menu, we'll be able to see our newly created endocast 3D model. And now the original segmentation of that endocast and the new 3D model of the endocast are going to look exactly the same. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of the segmentation and of our skull model. So now what's left is just our new endocast model. And that's really as simple as it gets. So you create your segmentation, right click on it and select turn it into a model. Um, in 3D Slicer, there's always multiple ways that you can do things and you can kind of adapt your workflow to whatever's best for your project. That's just one quick and easy way that I use for my work. Leave a comment down below if you know of another way that might be helpful for somebody else. Um, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, like and subscribe down below. And as always, I just want to say a huge thank you to the 3D Slicer team who made this great software free for everyone to use. So thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next video.